Hello, I'm John. My major radio call sign is M0JPI. Welcome to my video about the Viper Tire and using it as a software defined radio. So the Viper Tire board can be used as various different applications, but one that was interesting for me was to use it as a software defined radio. So a software defined radio or SDR is a receiver or a transceiver that has components that are written in software. So the Viper Tire can be used as a receiver or you can transmit on it as well and use it as a transceiver. It will need um, a power output stage if you want to go on the air because it produces an output but it's a very low um, power. So in the Viper Tire, it's use, you can use direct digital synthesis which means that um, from the inputs or from the outputs, the um, radio signal is processed by a fast analog to digital converters or digital to analog converters and then it's processed by an FPGA chip here under the heatsink and then that data is sent over um, Ethernet or via Wi-Fi to your computer and then the computer controls the radio, sets the frequency and sets filtering and that kind of thing. It can be connected uh, directly to an antenna if you've got uh, connections that will connect on via SMA. So uh, I can connect the inputs direct to my antenna um, or I can connect it through a filter or if your radio has got uh, an RF output you could connect it to that as well. While I was making this video with my original Red Pattaya board which is a STEM lab 14 board that I bought myself. Repertile actually sent me to try one of the 16-bit STEM lab boards uh, and this has been redesigned from the ground up for radio applications. So the original STEM lab 14 which is a uh, STEM lab 12514 has got um, input attenuator selectors uh, you need to make sure that you take these jumpers off instead of having them in the high or the low position you actually take off the jumper just have one spare and have one fitted in the center position that turns off the attenuators and goes straight into the analog to digital converters for the original 14-bit board you'll also need these transformers the radio transformers because there's high impedance inputs on the original STEM lab board and there is also on the STEM lab 10 bit version as well. You'll need to put these impedance transformers in so that you can use it as a software defined radio. With the new board, the 16 bit board, the STEM lab 12216, they actually have got uh, impedance transformers built into them on the board and they've changed the board all in its all of the front end is designed from radio from the beginning there's a lot less on the board as well so if you look on the front end there's a lot less between the inputs and outputs and the the adcs and dacs so if you look at the back on the original there's a lot more circuits amplifiers and things like that to cope with the fact that it's got high impedance so as well as improving the front end for radio, um, that's had the effect of reducing um, distortion on the inputs and the outputs as well, presumably. They've also changed the um, ADC. So the ADC is now a 16-bit ADC. And you can see here it's got its own oscillator, which is... Um, an improvement over the original board and they've also changed the actual system on a chip inside underneath the heatsink so this was a, a zinc 7010 FPGA and combined um, ARM CPU core this is a 7020 chip it's got the same uh, CPU core um, but it has got, and it's got the same RAM as well, it's got 512 megabytes of RAM on both of them. But it has got double the FPGA fabric, which allows it to do a lot more signal processing. Uh, other than that, a lot of the things are the same, the expansion header is the same, the heatsink's the same, and the, um, the board 
overall layout and size, and they both use the same case, cases. Uh, they've both got USB on the go and SD cards, sync connectors, and they've also got the uh, gigabit ethernet with the sticker of how to access the website that it produces on the ethernet ports. So I'm gonna have a look at both of these and I'm gonna compare them in this video. Um, to connect them, it's the same as the original web tire. So you can either put ethernet, ethernet connection, or you can, if you have a Wi-Fi dongle, it has got an on-the-go connector. So you can put the Wi-Fi dongle onto it. I found it's easier with the Ethernet because it, it's also a configuration. You don't need to worry about passwords and um, things like that. And then you just power them with this USB power at the bottom. And uh, you can, they've both got console connections if you want to connect a USB console and uh, access the Linux command line. Uh, when you plug them in, um, you get power on, which is the green one, and then blue means that it's got an FPGA, the bitstream image. And this is flashing because I've used on here the Pavel Demin SDR software, and the default application that it loads into the bitstream is actually a flashing LED program, so that's what that's there for. Um, the default program that I've used on here, the, S the um, SD card has got the standard image from Red Pattaya. Uh, that uses one of the LEDs as almost like a hard disk indicator for the SD card. So you can see when it's accessing the SD card. So there's a bit of a difference in software there. I'll look at the software next. Before you run the STEM lab transceiver program on your computer, you need to make sure that the Stamlab SDR transceiver bitstream is running on the FPGA. To do this, uh, you run it just like any of the other programs on the website for your Repetire board. Um, so you need to go to the address that's on the sticker for your, it's on the Ethernet port of your Repetire. And then you just click on Stamlab SDR and then it's running the SDR transceiver bitstream. You then need to open up the application on your own computer. Before you start HP SDR, you need to choose a bitstream for the FPGA to be running. Um, when you're using the 16-bit STEM lab SDR board, the recommended build is to use this Stemlab SDR notes from Pavel Demin. Just be aware that there is two versions. There's a Stemlab notes, which is for the 10 or 14 bit Stemlab. And then there's this Stemlab SDR notes, which is for the 16 bit SDR board. Uh, they are different and what you can't run one on the other. These are the different applications that come with uh, Pavel Demin's version. Uh, the one I used for the test was the SDR receiver uh, because I wasn't doing any transmit and I thought it might be give a bit more of, a, of the FPGA area over to receive. So when you click on that it almost instantly loads the bitstream into the FPGA just like the other programs and then from there you can open up your HP SDR program and it's ready to run. There are different ways of connecting to the Red Pattaya. You can use um, the HamLab StemLab setting, which automatically detects your Red Pattaya. I think it bases it on the Ethernet MAC address. Um, so I found it works well if you're plugged in by Ethernet, but doesn't work so well if you're plugged in via Wi-Fi dongle. Um, but underneath it is trying to emulate a Hermes hardware. Um, and so if you're using the Wi-Fi dongle, I found that the um, IP address setting works better with the Hermes. Um, so these tests were actually done set up as Hermes. There's a few different settings you can choose. One of them um, is the sample rate. I found that makes the most difference and you'll see different samples next. On this highest setting, I found that it doesn't connect. I don't think the bitstream supports that. Um, 
So I've tried it on, um, this is the highest setting, and then I tried it on the middle setting, and I tried it on the lowest setting. Um, the radio station I'm using is the BBC 5 Live, and this lowest sample rate seems to take up the whole um, of the radio station. I've left the bit rate, the buffer size, so it's set to the highest possible. Um, there are lower settings, which I think would give you less lag, but on a broadcast radio station, I don't think lag makes much difference. Um, it would make more difference if you were using it as a transceiver and you were having a conversation. But for uh, broadcast, that's this is the best option is probably just to leave the buffer size the highest. And I've done the same for the primary and for the um, BAC1. So I've just, this is just using my sound card built into the computer. So I've set them to both to the highest buffer size. Um, on the audio sample rate, I left them both as uh, 48 uh, kilobits per second. Uh, there is a higher option and these do work, um, but I found that um, there's also lower options as well. But I found that the higher settings um, cause a problem with my network. So I have used um, Ethernet to connect to the Vapid Hire, but then I'm connecting via Wi-Fi to my computer. So I think that this 48,000 kilobits per second is the compromise that I found works best. Um, if you're connecting to your computer via gigabit Ethernet as well as the Vapid Hire, then you probably will be fine. Um, I don't really know what the other settings do, so um, I haven't changed them. There is a lot of them. I'll just go through them so you can see there's a whole load of different settings. So um, the software I'm using is uh, HP SDR, but I am using the Charlie 25 STEM Lab Ham Lab edition. I think the Charlie 25 project has um, modified it a bit to work better with the uh, STEM Lab and HamLab hardware. So that's my settings. Uh, next I'll show you the samples. On digital, BBC sounds, smart speaker and online. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. BBC News at 6 o'clock. This is Tom Harrigan. Holds for their employees. As yeah. well as the business itself, I, I see. I see that point, but they're, they're, they are making the point, aren't they? That they're trying to get in the best shape possible to 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 deal with the future. The virus and the community evolves may may be relaxed, but track and trace is not the only thing that needs to be in place. The Home Office has announced it's extending leave to remain. Does that mean there have to be bailouts provided for every industry? So many questions. OK, Nina, thank you. Five Labs, Nina Warhurst. Then uh, let's speak uh, to Unite Union. Then we can speak to Steve Turner. It's three minutes past six. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. On digital, BBC Sounds, smart speaker and online. Uh, there seems to be a theme developing here. We're asking for our fresco news. Nerves in Derby, but also around the country, 11 sites across the UK, and they haven't ruled out closing some sites completely. Yeah, it'll be devastating news as well for many firms. So that's my comparison between the two boards and how they work as a SDR. So we've got the original... 14-bit STEM lab board, which has got the high impedance inputs. It's designed more as a test and measurement board, but you can adapt it and use it for SDR. Don't forget to change the jumper to the center setting. Um, this one is still in test and measurement mode, and you'll need to put in impedance transformers to make it uh, perform as best as it can. With the special radio board, the 16-bit STEM Lab 122, 16. You don't need any of the imp impedance transformers that are already built in. Um, it has a much bigger FPGA. And if you want to know more details about these for use as uh, an SDR receiver or transceiver, especially the um, technical details, the differences between the board, and if you want to know about more about how they could be used for transmit, there is a good video by the Charlie 25 project uh, and I will link to that in the description below and they go into more technical details and they'll tell you details about their Charlie 25 project. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you did and if you didn't please give me some feedback and uh, I will see if I can 
incorporate that in my next videos. Thank you.